if you have children, you know, all this knowledge, if only I knew then, that's what we want to pass on to our kids, right? Well, unfortunately, technology is not to the point where we can just put a cap on and share that knowledge, let them know exactly what we've learned. But my next guest is Dr. Andy McQuitty. We'll call him the uh, Pastor Andy from now on. He's written a book that's pretty close to um, being able to put a cap on and share that knowledge. He's written Your Best Life Later. Welcome, Pastor Andy. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Pleasure to be with you. Well, let's talk about your book. The, I love the title, Your Best Life Later. It, it says exactly that. We've we've lived these experiences and now we get to bless our children and share, for better or worse, what we've learned. Yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, Apologies to Joel Olstein for the title of the book. Uh, it is Your Best Life Later and subtitle, What Every Daughter and Son Needs to Know. And the story on, on this book, Suzanne, is that it is a book that I never intended to write for publication. Huh. It actually started out when my children, I have five children, when they were very young. Um, my first daughter, I started her journal at five and the other four mm -hmm. I started in their infancy. And I, as they grew, as they were born into our family, I just started a journal for each one of them in which I wrote to them as young adults even though they were like in diapers and, and wow. all the way through elementary school and so forth. And I carried this monologue conversation on in their journals uh, for 25 years until all of them, I, you know, when they, when they turned 18 and we took them and moved them into their freshman dorm room in college, that's when I presented each one of them their journal. And, uh, and basically, uh, it was just the heart of a father wanting to, to, to communicate uh, to, to my children the, the, the things that I felt like God was laying on my heart as their father mm -hmm. to, to teach them. And uh, wow. it, it kind of started in Proverbs 1, uh, 7 through 9, where uh, the wise man says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And then he says, mm -hmm. listen, my son to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. I read that verse from the perspective of a dad yeah. listening to my children say back to the Lord, I want to listen to his instruction, but where is it? Oh, you know? wow. And I thought, okay, I, I better write it down so, yes. that, so that they'll know where it is. This is my instruction. And so I wrote biblical uh, expressions of my own life experiences to each of my children in their journals, just just sharing from my life. OK, and, and it's a little embarrassing, Suzanne, I got to tell you, uh, because much of what I share in these journals doesn't make me look good at all. I'm very transparent. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to show my children the process of growing in Christ and applying scripture. And so it, all the scripture is always um, attached to something that I've experienced or learned through personal and sometimes painful experience. But it was all about, as you say, imparting to them yeah. godly principles uh, that, to, to live their life fruitfully and joyfully for the kingdom. Pastor, one of the best parts about this is that you started when they were so young. You weren't fully mature and developed yet. You had only gone through your life as a single, newly married, and newly parent. You had lots more kids coming along. You had a lot of growing and learning to do yourself. You were you were uh, writing and sharing this as you were experiencing it. It wasn't in your senior years looking back. You were living it and sharing it. it gives me yeah. goosebumps to think about that. Yeah, it, it it's funny that you point that out, and that's a that's a very good insight into the process mm -hmm. of this. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, my my oldest daughter, uh, who had received her copy of the book. Uh, came over. She lives in Fort Worth. We're in Dallas. She came over and we had lunch together and she was sitting with Alice and me. And Julie looked at me and she says, Dad, she says, you know what I discovered in reading your book? She she had read her journal, obviously. But until this book came out, she never saw her siblings journals. Oh, she, 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 she never wow. she never knew what I was writing to all the rest of them. And of course, that's true for all of them. But, you sure. know, the book is the first time they got to see what I wrote to all of them. 
And her comment over this whole labor of love, 25 years it took me to tell you, she says, Dad, you grew up when you were writing that book. She wow. said, you grew up. I can see your growth. And uh, that, that, that I, th I think at first it was kind of like um, that. What are you saying, babe? I was yeah, like a, little a little humbling. Baby at first. And, yeah. and she, she kind of yeah. was. But so that was kind of the bad. But then the encouraging part was she saw growth. And yeah. Yeah, I started this when I was about 30 years old. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've just we just published it and I'm 66. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. looking back over that whole period of time and the, and the last word I wrote in my youngest journal was 12 years ago. So and it had That's taken incredible. 25 years to, from the first to the last one. So this is a, a long time ago. It's funny. I forgot all about this until I retired as senior pastor at IBC and they threw me a big dinner and my assistant flew the kids in from all over the world and said, bring the journals your dad wrote to you and read wow. from them at this big banquet. She remembered. Them read the good parts. She, I asked her, I said, <laughs> before we gave them to the kids in their freshman dorm room, I said, Donna, make a copy for me. OK, so she knew yeah. about these journals and then she took it upon herself. And that's how I remembered it. I mean, that's 12 years ago. And that is uh, amazing. So anyway, it's it's a fun thing. I'm surprised that it's here. <laughs> I I can understand that. That's been a labor of love that if you had known how much was going to go into it, maybe you wouldn't have had the had the um energy to think that you could even yeah. do it. God is so gracious in in yeah. our ignorance to just walk us, baby walk us through these. Um, big steps, right? Yeah, that's so that's yeah. so true. And, you know, I, I think it is a, a God thing. Um, whenever whenever we set out in whatever endeavor we have for the Lord and for the kingdom, such as parenting, I believe that if we submit our lives to the Lord and ask him to guide and lead us, that he will bring little ways for us to fulfill his word towards our children. Mm -hmm. For me, this was one of them. And as I said before, I, I, I did not plan this out. It was not strategic, but I do think God put it in my in my heart, and in my head to start that first journal. And then and mm -hmm. then his grace was with me to finish it all the way through. And and we hope now that this will this will be like for young adults, especially we've 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 designed the book so that it's actually in, in, in 150 daily devotionals. And we've titled each entry and I put a little PS 2021, you know, um, uh, an aphorism or a, a scripture to just say all these years later, here's what I think is the heart of what I'm teaching in this thing. But all oh, the rest man. of it is the original journals that I wrote to the kids. And mm. it has all the wisdom that I could possibly download during those years for young adults and and, 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 and I'm hoping that this book will be used by young adults as a daily devotional to develop the discipline of coming daily to the word of God. And every one of these entries has scripture in it. So it's, it, you know, it, it develops that daily discipline in young adults, as well as giving them some, some, some shortcuts into the principles of life that, that come mm -hmm. out of my life experience and, and the scripture so that they really will gain, if they haven't already, what they need to know mm -hmm. <laughs> to live a fruitful and flourishing life for Christ. What What is that secret? What is that general thread that's run through all the books that you logged for your kids? What is that general thread of the secret to living a godly life and being godly parents? Well, um, I would I would say probably... Um, Proverbs 834, which is in the introduction to the book. Um, that's where the wise man says, blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. God in the, in, in, in the book of wisdom enjoins all of his children as they're, as they're growing up to daily come and listen and watch and wait for him. And, and I take that to be a time of communion with the Lord in the word and prayer. Mm -hmm. Daily watch, daily wait. And um, that's, that's the message that runs through all of these entries. That's the, that's the uh, kind of the, 
the framework that, that it's all built upon is, mm -hmm. is daily paying attention to, to God and what he is doing in your life. And he mm -hmm. promises that if we do that, what? You're mm -hmm. blessed. Blessed mm -hmm. are those. So that's, that's, that's kind of the impetus behind all of this stuff. And, you know, it, it's, it was so fun for me at the end of the book, we have pictures of all my grown children and their families and a little uh, CV on what they're doing with their life and so forth. And they're just, if I may say so, they're just all world beaters. I mean, they are oh. just out there just changing the world for Christ. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and I love that because it, it proves what God says in Proverbs eight thirty four. That, yeah. if, that if you will, as you're growing, come daily, watch and wait at my doors, I will bless you. He has blessed them. Yeah. And he will, he will bless everybody who follows these principles. But it's our responsibility. And that's happened because you poured into the kids. Well, you yeah, put God first before your daily busyness and everything. That was a constant priority. Yeah. And that's the waiting on God each yeah. day. And, and, uh, I just, I just want to step back and give all credit to my wife, Alice. I mean, I wrote this journals and published this book and it, 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 it makes my importance in the raising of our children to be godly men and women all out of proportion to what my mm. wife contributed. Mm. I mean, Alice homeschooled these children for 17 wow. years. She launched them. She poured her heart and her soul into these kids. And uh, as I was saying to you before, she in her own right is accomplished. And so, yeah, I, I wrote these journals and invested in that way. But Alice and I were a team and together, as, as you as you just commented, we we just you know, we raised our children in relationship daily, you know, taking them to the Lord and spending time with them, with the Lord and sharing our lives with them. Um, in terms of what the Lord is doing in our lives. And, and as a result of all of that, not just this, I have no illusions that only these journals is to account for my children's uh, sure. spiritual success in the world. But uh, right. it's just, it's, it's one of the arrows in the quiver that par parents can have. You wouldn't be open to adopting a middle-aged woman by any chance would you <laughs> just asking for a friend <laughs> well, well it's funny you it say right. that i i got a note from a, an old friend of mine um a, a, a woman who um uh, is uh just maybe 10 years younger than me and she grew up in a home without a father without a christian father oh. and she's she just wrote me this note she says andy when i picked up your book and read it I began to think of how much loss in my own life I had by not having a godly dad to write to me like this. And I even started to think, I, man, I, I, I wish I wish Andy could have in some way been my dad. And then she said, I read what you wrote in the at the end of your introduction, in which I actually invite the reader that if you haven't had a father, if you haven't had this kind of influence in your life, would you allow me to be your spiritual stand in dad? I actually wow. asked permission in the book. I wow. said, just put your name in the, in, in the place of uh, the names of all my children and read every entry that I wrote to them. Read it as to you. And my friend said to me, she, she said, I saw that and began to weep. So, yeah, I don't have to adopt you. I can just I can just. Yeah give give you these musings and 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 pray that the god the grace of god will bless your heart with them i will take what i can get and that sounds right. pretty good to me pastor you are uh, represented by leadership books publishing and we thank you so much for setting this up and being part of it we could talk a whole lot longer um pastor andy mcquitty your best life later thanks for joining us thank you suzanne pleasure to be with you <laughs>